hear the open air the driving through the radio. So that's 107.5 uh, FM. Thank you. We'll start in a couple of minutes' time. Folks, we're going to make a start to our drive-in service this evening. First of all, let me welcome each and every one along to the service tonight. You're very, very welcome indeed. We thank you for coming, and especially if this is your first time, we do sincerely thank you for making the effort this evening. Now, we're just going to open in a word of prayer and ask the Lord for his help. We're delighted to have our sister Colette Denny with us tonight. Colette's come to sing, and... We pray that the Lord will bless her just in a few moments. But let us all bow our heads and have a wee word of prayer. Our loving Father in heaven, we thank thee and we praise thee for all thy mercies to us this day again, the Lord's day. We praise thee, Lord, for all who have gathered uh, tonight. And we pray, Lord, that you would come and bless our meeting this evening. We thank thee, Lord, for the privilege and the honor of meeting in the open air and we ask the Heavenly Father that you would speak to hearts. Bless Colette as she sings. Bless especially our brother Dennis as he would give a word of testimony. And O oh God, we pray for our, a moving of thy gracious Holy Spirit in our midst. We thank thee for the Lord Jesus who died upon the cross and shed his precious blood for our sins and rose again. O oh God, we praise thee for the message of the gospel. That it's still the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. And Lord, we pray tonight that there might be those who will not only hear the word, but, O oh God, that they might come and in childlike faith receive the Lord Jesus Christ as their own and personal Savior. So undertake for us now. Bless every part of this service. And Lord, we pray for all open air services like this right across our province. Lord, as thy word goes forth, we pray where men are true to the book and true to the blood. Bless your servants. And may this be a high day for the preaching of the gospel. For it's in Jesus' precious name we ask it. Amen. Amen. We are delighted this evening to have our sister Colette Danny with us. No stranger to any of us. Colette's going to come now and she's going to bring us a couple of messages in song.
You may think it foolish what I'm going to say, but I'm not ashamed. No, I'm not ashamed. One day I asked Jesus, take my sin away. And that's when I was born again. Born again, there's really been a change in me. Born again, just like Jesus said. Born again, and all because of Calvary. I'm glad, so glad that I've been born again. A man came to Jesus, John in chapter 3. He was so afraid, oh yes, so afraid. Master, you're from God, I really do believe. But Jesus said, be born again. Born again, there's really been a change in me born again just like Jesus said born again and all because of Calvary I'm glad so glad that I've been born again born again there's really been a change in me born again just like jesus said born again and all because of calvary i'm glad so glad that i've been born again my Jesus says, be born again. You know, I thank God for the day that I was born again and I gave my heart to him and it made such a difference in my life. You know, this next little song is for someone, maybe tonight you're going through difficult times. Maybe you don't know where to turn. Well, can I point you to Jesus and know this, that he is praying for you. Do your clouds run together in the midst of the sea? Is your ship tired and battered? Are you weary and worn? Don't give up, someone's praying for you this very day. And peace be still is already on its way. Someone is praying for you. Someone is praying for you. Just when it seems you're all alone and your heart will break in two, remember someone is praying for you. Do you feel that you're weak? And your strength is all gone And tears fall like raindrops All the day long Jesus
Jesus cares and he knows just how much you can bear. He'll speak your name to the Father in prayer. Someone is praying for you. Someone is praying for you. Just when it seems you're all alone and your heart will break in two, remember someone is praying for you. Remember Jesus is praying for you. The Lord bless those lovely hymns to all of our hearts. And we do thank Colette for coming along and singing to us. We'll be hearing from her just in a few moments' time. There's just a few announcements I would like to make uh, very, very uh, briefly. Again, let me welcome each and every one along to the service tonight. We are so encouraged to see so many here. And we do thank you sincerely for coming. I do remember our Bible study on Tuesday night. We would encourage you to tune in again and listen to the Bible study at 8 p.m. on Tuesday evening. And then, in the will of the Lord, next Lord's Day again, if you are able to tune in to our morning service at 11.30 a.m. And next Sunday morning is our special Children's Day. And obviously it'll be a lot different than normal, but some of the children from the Sunday school will be taking part uh, next Sunday morning at that special service. And the Reverend David Park will be bringing a word from the Lord. So again, we would encourage you to tune in and listen. And then next Sunday night, the drive-in service. Please come again. The Lord has been so kind to us these nights with the weather, and we thank the Lord uh, for that. But do remember the drive-in service next Sunday night at 6.30 p.m. Come along and join with us. There is a free will offering as you leave the church tonight at the gate. If you're able to give, then you give as the Lord has laid upon your heart. But if you've come unprepared, don't you worry about that. But it's just for those who uh, are able to give. We'd like to welcome our brother Dennis Lyle with us tonight. Our brother uh, has consented to come and we are delighted to have him. And we pray that the Lord will bless him just in a few moments, a few moments time. Uh, just for our committee men, I think they all know by now, we're having a committee meeting on uh, Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. And do pray for the committee as we meet to discuss the way forward as we think about getting back into the church again that the Lord will give us, give us wisdom. Now we're going to ask Colette to come. She's going to come and sing another piece uh, just before Dennis comes to give us testimony. In the books of the Bible, these words you will read, how a man turned from God through envy and greed. He turned from his maker to follow his own. If God came tonight, are you ready for home? Are you ready for home? Are you ready for home? If God came tonight, are you ready for home? Let me ask you one question. For this you must know. If God came tonight, are you ready for home? 
Don't let no one fool you by saying you have time. Repent now to Jesus, or you will be left behind. For it says in the Bible, you shall reap what you sow. If God came tonight, are you ready for home? Are you ready for home? Are you ready for home? If God came tonight, are you ready for home? Let me ask you one question. For this you must know. If God came tonight, are you ready for home? If God came tonight, are you ready for Just before Pastor Lyle comes to speak to us and to give us testimony, let's have a wee word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank thee and praise thee for these lovely hymns that our sister Colette has sung tonight. We thank the Lord for drawing our attention to Christ. We praise thee for our blessed Saviour. And oh God, we pray just now as our brother Dennis would come to share with us his testimony, that you would bless him in his own heart and in his own soul and bless us through him. We thank the Lord for the day when you saved him by your grace. And, O oh God, we pray tonight that he might know the infilling of God, the Holy Spirit, as he would speak to us this evening. For it's in Jesus' precious name we ask it. Amen. I am delighted to have our brother, Pastor Dennis Lyle, with us tonight. Dennis, of course, is retired now. He has entered into a very collusive group of men. And we do... Pray that the Lord will bless him in his retirement. I know that while he's retired, he's very busy. But we're delighted that he's with us tonight. We'd like to thank him for coming. And we pray that the Lord will bless him as he shares his testimony with us. God bless you, Dennis. I want, if you have a copy of the Word of God in your car this evening, to turn with me to the Luke, Luke's Gospel, chapter 23, please. The Gospel by Luke, chapter 23, and the verse 33. And as you turn and find the place, I want to thank the Reverend Gray for his kind words of welcome. It's a joy to be with you in Tandra Gee this evening and to have the opportunity of relating how the Lord met me on the road of life and how the Lord sustained me and how the Lord has kept me to this day. In Luke's Gospel, chapter 23, we're brought right to the cross. We read in the verse 33, And when they were come, to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him and the malefactors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. And the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them derided him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he be Christ the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar and saying, If thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. And the superscription was written over him in letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew, This is the king of the Jews. And may God bless to our hearts tonight the public reading of his own inspired and inerrant word. If I were to ask you tonight, why did the Lord Jesus die? I wonder how you would respond. From every human point of view, the death of the Lord Jesus was a triumph of injustice and inhumanity, and yet Christ died willingly. He could have called 10,000 angels to rescue him, but he refused. He surrendered himself to the hands of wicked men 
and he willingly died on the cross. But why? People die for a variety of reasons. Some die of old age, some die with cancer, some like myself of heart and kidney disease, some die through suicide, some die through coronavirus, others are even martyred for their faith in the Lord. But why did Christ die? When we turn to the New Testament, we discover at least three distinct answers to that question. First of all, Christ died that we might live through him. John says, in this was manifested the love of God toward us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Christ died that we might live through him. That's salvation. My friend, the word of God describes us as being dead spiritually. That's why the Lord Jesus said to Nicodemus, ye must be born again. This was my exact condition before a holy God. I was lost, I was sinful, I was depraved, I was spiritually dead, I was not alive to the things of God, I was on the broad road that leads to the very pit of hell itself, but God who was rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he hath loved us, even when we were dead in sin, hath quickened us together with Christ. As I look back tonight on my life, there are certain things that I recognize. First of all, there was instruction through the Word. I was instructed in the Word of God privately. You remember what Paul said concerning Timothy, and from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. And that was my privilege also. My name is Dennis Lyle. I was born a few miles from Tandragee in the town of Banbridge. And like many of you listening to my voice tonight, I had the privilege of being brought up in a Christian home. From the earliest days, I saw in my father a man who honored the Son of God, obeyed the Word of God, sought the face of God, was involved in the work of God, encouraged the people of God, and had a burden for those without God. Sometimes folk meet me and say, you're the image of your father in looks perhaps, but in godliness, there's a long way to go. But this was the environment in which I was brought up. From earliest days, I knew and heard the old, old story of Jesus and his love. Young folk tonight, don't take your Christian heritage for granted. Don't take your gospel privileges for granted. I was instructed in the word of God privately. I was instructed in the word of God publicly. The little building that used to stand on the Newry Road in Van Bridge but is now demolished was the birthplace of many precious souls. And through the ministry of faithful pastors there, I heard the word of God faithfully preached. I was left in no doubt as to my ruin in Adam and God's remedy in Jesus Christ. I remember at an old godly Sunday school teacher called Bob French, I I gave him a hard time. I remember him coming down from Lennon Hall Street. I can see him yet in my mind's eye with an overcoat upon on his back and a, a packet of mints in his pocket and a pair of those old shoes and boots that go up to your ankles. And through that dear man of God, I heard about a Savior's love. Tell me tonight, have you enjoyed these privileges? I wonder this evening... Is there a father in glory tonight? And you recall him instructing you in the word of God. I wonder is there a mother tonight in heaven? And you remember her weeping for your soul. And you recall, and you recall her tears. And could it be tonight in spite of all these privileges. You're still unwashed. You're still unprepared. You're still unsaved. In spite of your instruction through the word. As I look back tonight. There was not only instruction through the word, thank God, there was salvation by the blood. Indeed, that's the only way that you and I can be saved, through faith in his blood. And so it was through home life and church life that God spoke to me definitely and specifically and personally. One Sunday evening, 
When I was just a little boy of nine years of age, I was troubled. I'd been to the gospel service. I'd come home, and I was deeply troubled. And I remember my father taking out the word of God and leading me, pointing me to the Savior. I'm sure that many of you know where the DUP offices are on Refreyland Street, number eight. That was our home. And the barber shop was downstairs, and the lounge was upstairs. And sometimes when I'm walking down Refreyland Street, I'll say to Catherine, or I'll say to my grandchildren, that's where I was saved up on that lounge. That's where I met the Lord. That's where I cast my first anchor. I remember praying that simple prayer as a little boy. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today. Come in to stay. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. I was only a child, but with childlike faith I came to Christ. Dear friends, is that not how we must all come? The Savior said, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. I wonder tonight, have you come with childlike faith to Christ? Maybe you're here tonight, you're 9 years of age, you're 19 years of age, you're 90 years of age. It doesn't matter your age tonight. Christ is the answer to your every need. And that night, though 9 years of age, the burden was lifted. What does a wee boy of 9 years of age do when he gets saved? Well, he prays, and I did. He attends Sunday school, and I did. He went to the children's meetings, and I did. But you know, my dear friends, it wasn't long before I realized there was a personal devil. I realized that Satan was on my track. And after a period of time, I lost my edge for God and my love for Christ. You know, God's people can backslide. God says through Jeremiah the prophet, Turn, O backsliding children, for I am married unto you. Wonder tonight, are you within the, vo the sound of my voice? Maybe you've lost your edge for God. Maybe you've grown cold. Maybe you've left your first love. I certainly did. This was a time in my life when I changed school and changed company. And these were days when football played an important part of my life. And if I wasn't playing football, I was watching. And maybe you're saying, well, Dennis, no harm in that, no harm in that, except my company was godless and the language was atrocious. Wonder tonight, are you going to places where the Savior's name is being dishonored? The Savior's work is being despised. The Savior's precious blood is being trampled underfoot. My dear friends, the psalmist said, I'm a companion of all them that fear thy name. Young folk tonight, older folk tonight, watch your company. They will make you or break you. Wrong company often leads to wrong conduct. And this guy who had a godly home and a gospel church was now sinning against the Lord. I was like many teenagers. I thought that I knew better than my parents. I was by now a rebel. Frequenting places and indulging in practices that I'll not mention tonight, but the world's philosophy was mine. Eat, drink, and be merry. Tomorrow you die. Isn't that what the prodigal thought? He wanted to be free. He wanted to do his own thing. No restrictions, no limitations. Let the good times roll. Wonder tonight, is that what you think? If you do, my friend, you've, you've swallowed the devil's first lie. This is what I did. This was weekend living. And yet in those days of rebelliousness, there's a memory that's etched upon my mind. I remember coming in on a Saturday night and it was late, turning the key and making my way through the barber's shop. But before I went upstairs to bed, I looked through the glass window and into the lounge and I can see a man on his knees and he's crying to God for his wayward son. And thank God, God saw his tears and heard his cry. Mothers tonight, fathers, have you a wayward son? Have you a wayward daughter? Have you a family that's not saved? Have you someone tonight who's in the far country? Well, every time you look at this preacher, remember God, your God, is a God who hears and answers prayer. Teenager tonight, I wonder, are you just like me? Maybe you're here tonight and you're breaking your father and mother's heart. You know tonight there's a father who's praying for you. You know tonight there's a mother who's crying to God for you. Maybe there's a backslider here tonight. My friend, if you've lost your edge for God, you're in the worst possible position. For the Bible says, the way of the transgressor is hard. My sin 
was beginning to weigh heavy upon me. I was beginning to discover that sin will take you further than you want to go. Sin will keep you longer than you want to stay. Sin will cost you more than you want to pay. Oh, I was still attending church. My father and mother saw to that. And I remember it was a usual Sunday evening and I, I made my way to the little Baptist church and I was sitting in the gallery and I sat at the back of the gallery so that I could talk and chitter and try and disturb the meeting. But you know, my dear friends, when God speaks, you listen. And that night as the pastor was preaching on this prodigal son, the Spirit of God spoke to my heart. He was painting a picture of me. The Holy Ghost was painting a picture of me. That night, God spoke to my heart. I remember afterwards the boy standing in Uri Street waiting for me for a night's crack and me making my way home with the tears coursing down my cheeks and the pastor came to see me later on that evening and in the very spot where I had initially placed my trust in Jesus Christ. That night, I committed my life afresh to the Lord. I confessed my sin to him. The Bible says if we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And thank God that night, God restored me to the joy of his salvation. I'm, am I wonder tonight, am I speaking to someone just like me? Maybe you've been brought up in a godly home. Maybe you've professed faith in Jesus Christ. Maybe you're here tonight and you're backslidden in heart. Oh, maybe you're still going through the motions, but God knows, and you know tonight, you're in the far country, my dear friends. God still loves you, and he longs for you to return to him. I wonder tonight, will you come back to him this evening? This is why Christ died. Christ died that we might live through him that salvation. New, tell, New Testament tells us something else. Christ died that we might live for him, that service. Paul says, and that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Christ died my death for me, that I might live his life for him. Christ died that I might live through him. Christ died that I might live for him. I wonder tonight, are you living for him? I mean... When you're walking with the Lord, you want to do something for him. I recall those first years. We, we love, I, I was saying to your pastor, I love these drive-in services because that's where I first started to preach in the open air. And every Saturday night, there was a group of us used to stand in Uri Street and preach to those who were going in to the dance hall across the street. We used to cross the border in the days when troubles were rife and stand in the center of Dundalk. And those were great days and Christ was precious and the word was living and souls were being saved. And then came my first opportunity to speak. Remember a friend of mine took ill and he said to me, you'll have to go. It was only a few miles down the road from here. All of you will remember it well. Tommy Rands was from this town. And I spoke in that little mission hall where only the steps are now remaining. And those were days when I enjoyed the Lord and I enjoyed his word. And what a debt I owe personally uh, to the late Willie Mullen, Pastor Mullen. But you know, a conviction was growing in my heart that days of secular employment were coming to an end. And I might say at this particular time, a Christian young lady, a staff nurse in Banbridge Hospital, crossed my pathway, a free Presbyterian, if you please, who encouraged me greatly in the things of the Lord. And we had talked about Bible college and this conviction for Bible college had been growing. But For I felt my need of concentrated Bible study, but I needed a word from God that would seal it all. And I remember one night I was praying and meditating and seeking the face of the Lord. And the Lord spoke to me clearly through one verse in Acts 20, 28. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God with its purchase with his own blood. And I said, Lord, I'm willing to leave my work and go into training for you. But the devil immediately said, what if that means leaving your family, your security and your country? I thought about that, but I sensed that this was God's will for my life, and I took the next step, and I, 72, I entered 
the Irish Baptist College on the Sandown Road in Belfast, and I remember the first night, the first day very well, because the first night I was leaving, I was ready to go home. I met the student and I said to him, how many nights can you get out of this institution? And he said to me, none. It was worse than Alcatraz. The guys in McGabry have more freedom. Well, the Lord undertook for me in college, but I decided one year was enough to live in the premises of the college and the only way that I could get out was to marry. And so in 1973, I took the plunge and Catherine and I got married in the old Free Presbyterian Church on the Waveney Road in Valamina. And the Reverend Willie McRae married us and the glue is still holding fast. You know, when we got married, we hardly knew where we were going to live. But the Lord had gone ahead and prepared life for us in Randallstown. And for two years, I traveled from Randallstown to Belfast. And these were days when we proved the Lord intellectually and physically and spiritually and mentally. And you say, what did Bible college teach you? Well, it taught me two things. One, it taught me how little I know about this precious book. And the second thing it taught me was the discipline of hard work, the discipline of study. There's no substitute for hard work. My friend, the God who had called me was now enabling me. He was now preparing me. He was now directing me. The first years led to the further years. Paul asks a question in 1 Corinthians 4 and the verse 7. He says, what hast thou that thou didst not receive? I want to tell you tonight that all that I am and all that I have and all that I ever hope to be is from the Lord. In 1975, when I finished Bible college, I received an invitation to pastor the work at Parry Duff. And then in 1987, I received an invitation to come to the Iron Hall in East Belfast. And then in 1998, I received an inv invitation from Lurgan Baptist Church. And I responded, you know, I believe tonight that pastoral work is the most difficult of all Christian servants. But God's servant and I can say tonight, having obtained help of God, we continue unto this day. What blessings the Lord has showered upon us. My friends, tonight there's no greater joy than serving the Lord and seeing others coming to the footstool of the cross. The Christian life tonight, it's the hardest life, it's the holiest life, but it's the happiest life, and the joy of the Lord is our strength. The first years, the further years, and now the final years. You know, some of us are not as young as we used to be. But thank God tonight, you can have some snow on the roof and still have a fire in the furnace to the glory of God. Dear Christian friend tonight, don't give up the battle. Amen. Don't retire until God retires you or promotes you to glory. You remember old Caleb, at 85 years of age, he cries, give me, th give me this mountain. Older folk tonight, is this your watchword? As you near old age, have you lost the spirit of adventure? Are you hesitant to take another step for God? I don't know about you tonight. I want to finish well. I want to hear the Savior's, the Savior's approval, the Savior's words of commendation. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Why did Jesus Christ die? Christ died that we might live through him. That's salvation. Christ died that we might live for him. That's service. But here's the third reason. Christ died that we might live with him. Paul says, For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. That's satisfaction. Christ died that we might live with him. Is that not what he promised his disciples on the eve of his departure to Gethsemane, Gabbatha, Golgotha? In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. What a comfort for the saved. When those of us who are saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, will step into the Father's house. You talk about a happy ending. I heard about a little boy called Jonathan and he'd been promised 
a new puppy for his sixth birthday. And his mom took him down to the local pound and he never saw so many dogs and puppies. And he had a difficult time choosing which one he wanted. And finally he picked up one of the shaggiest puppies in the lot that was standing there wagging its tail furiously. And his mother looked at him and said, Jonathan, why have you chosen that one? And he said, Mommy, I want the one with a happy ending. My dear friends, tonight you talk about a happy ending. And they shall see his face, John says. We shall see him as he is, face to face. With Christ my Savior, face to face. What will it be when with rapture I behold him? Jesus Christ who died for me. I tell you, when my train rounds into Grand Street in, in glory, I, I think my dad will be there. How much I owe him. How he prayed for me when I was in the far country. And I think he'll say, well, son, how did you get on? And I'll say, well, pretty well. But I owe a lot to you. And together we'll gaze upon the face of our beloved Savior and friends will be there I have loved long ago and joy like a river around me will flow and yet just a smile from the Savior I know will through the ages be glory for me. Christ died that we might live for him. What a comfort for the saint. What a challenge for the sinner. Think of it tonight. In 100 years, Every soul in this building will be in eternity. The question is where? Where will you spend eternity? Can I remind you tonight there is an eternity? Paul says, the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen, God, Christ, heaven, hell, are eternal. You must spend eternity somewhere because you've got a soul that's imperishable and precious. My friend, you're going to spend eternity in one of two places. You're going to spend eternity in heaven with Christ or in hell without Christ. There's no purgatory. There's no in-between. And where you spend eternity will be determined by what you do with the Lord Jesus. Well, think of what Christ has done for you. Christ came to save you. Christ died to save you. Christ shed his blood to save you. Christ rose to save you. Christ lives to save you. Christ is here to save you. Would you come to the cross tonight? Would you come to Calvary? Would you come to the footstool of the cross tonight and claim Christ as your personal Savior? A little girl come home from Sunday school one day. She dumped onto her daddy's knee. And as usual, she began to tell him the story that she had heard in Sunday school. And this time it was the story of the cross. And she told him about the Lord Jesus and the scourging and the spitting and the crown of thorns. And then she looked into her daddy's face and said, Daddy, don't you love the Lord Jesus for that? And then she told him of the journey to Calvary. And at last, when they got the Savior to Golgotha, they drove the nails through his hands and his feet. And the little girl with tears in her eyes said, Daddy, don't you love him for that? And then she went on to tell how the Lord Jesus cried, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. It was a moving story. And the little one with tears streaming, coursing down her cheeks said, Daddy, don't you love him for that? And then the darkness of the cross and the precious blood flowing from his head, his hands, and his feet, and his side. And the wee girl could go on no further. And she flung her arms around her daddy's neck, and she says, Daddy, Daddy, don't you love the Lord Jesus for that? What all the arguments in the world could never do, that little girl's story of the cross just broke her daddy's heart. And as a poor lost sinner, he knelt at his kitchen table and he wept his way to Calvary. My friend, tonight in the light of the cross, won't you trust him for that? Won't you trust him for that? Why did the Lord Jesus die? He died that we might live through him. He died that we might live for him. He died that we might live with him. Will you come to Calvary tonight? Will you make Charlotte Elliot's hymn your prayer? Just as I am without one plea. That thy blood was shed for me. And that thou bidst me come to thee. O Lamb of God. I come. 
I come. Will you come? Will you come now? Let us all unite our hearts together in prayer. As we bow in prayer, we do thank God for his servant tonight, who has not only given a very clear word of testimony, but brought to you again the wonderful message of the gospel. My friend, I wonder, is there someone here this evening and you're not saved and you have been here in nights gone past and the Lord has spoken to your heart. You can be saved tonight. Thank God you can leave this drive-in service this evening knowing that you're on your way to heaven and home. My friend, come to Christ tonight. If we can be any help to you, Please speak to us afterwards. Maybe you're with someone who is a Christian. Mm. Well, just say to them, I need to get saved. If you need help, please don't leave the service tonight without getting right with God. Mm. Maybe there's someone here tonight and you're a backslider. As our brother Dennis gave us testimony how he backslid. The Lord has spoken to you afresh. Thank God the Lord is married to the backslider. And thank God the Lord tonight for you will restore the years that the locusts have eaten. And he'll take your life up again and he'll use it in his service. Please, if you'd like to speak to us, we're, we're here to open up the Bible and to show you from God's word how you can return to the Lord. Of course, you don't need us. Thank God, even where you're sitting now, you can bow the head and you can pray and ask the Lord to save you or to forgive you and to cleanse you, to restore you. And the Lord will do that. But please, I give you the invitation, if you want to come to Christ tonight, that you would seek the Lord this evening. Thank God he's only a prayer away. Father in heaven, we do thank thee and praise thee for your presence in the meeting tonight. We thank thee, Lord, for the word of God that has gone forth again so clearly, so powerfully. We thank thee, Lord, for speaking to hearts, drawing men and women, Lord, to the cross afresh. And though, God, we just pray now that as the voice of the preacher is silent, that the still small voice of God would work on in hearts. <clears throat> and Lord, we are very careful to give to thee the yeah. glory, the praise, and every bit of the honor. Mm. For it's in Jesus' precious name we ask it. Amen. 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 Folks, we do sincerely thank you for coming tonight. If you'd like to speak to us, do please wait behind. And let us open up the word of God and point you to the Savior. God bless you and safe home.